Hello everyone, welcome to I'll Be Sewing. So today we're doing the video live. Uh, I didn't have time to record something ahead of time, so I decided that I would do something live for you guys. And um, I decided that we would be doing like a little messenger bag, something that you guys um, can do it quite fast and it's a very inexpensive um, project. Uh, I get lots of customers sometimes now that uh, it's getting closer to Christmas and um, Everyone is just looking for fast projects that they can sell in their craft shows, uh, uh, church bazaars and stuff. And they, everybody's looking for something that they can do that's not going to cost a lot of money. And they can, you know, mass produce, make quite a bunch of them a little bit faster. So the ones that I have here, it's like this. And I have two colors here, but I'm going to show you a really, really easy way of doing these. Uh, and I'm also going to be showing you all to do the corners. These ones here I, I did with pockets. I am going to show you how you can attach pockets, but on the video, this one here, um, I'm not going to be putting pockets um, because so we're kind of short of time. We want to like be here sewing forever, but I will show you how you can add them. Okay, so, so to make these bags, um, we don't need a lot of fabric. So you there's options, lots of options that you can do these bags quite fast. And um, and um, material wise, it's not a lot. So you can use either just one fabric, you can use two fabrics, you can do the, the flap a different color. I'll also go through that and show you how you can actually change a couple of things on it just to make it a little more unique. Or if you want a really, really simple and you want to sew one of these in like, let's say 15, 20 minutes, you can definitely do that if you use one color. If you're going to use just one color fabric, um, I suggest you use fabrics that are um, non-directional. They will work best because otherwise you're going to have to cut and figure out where you're going to cut it and join them in order for the patterns to on the back be that direction and when it folds in it's going to be the other direction. This one, these ones here um, that I did is uh, they're fairly like they're very similar to the sunglass case also the computer bag that I've done in the past so it's the same idea and uh, it's just different measurements and a lot of people sometimes ask me oh how do I put a different color and uh, how am I going to do it for if I want the direction of the fabric to change so we're going to go through that we're going to I'm going to try to help you if you have questions and figure out you know if I can help you guys or when I did the sunglass case I had quite a few people that asked me how do I add corners? Can I make that into something else? So we're going to also talk about that. So I'm going to put these away. And um, so we're going to cover a couple different ones that we're going to go through here. So I picked a floral here that I have here. And the one that I have here is, doesn't it really have a directional because it's kind of just a simple floral like that. And what are you going to do about, I would say, two yards of fabric should give you about four bags and with straps if you use only one color okay then if you're going to use two colors as uh, the lining one color and the outside another color then you probably would do a yard of each color would also give you those same four bags okay so what i did here on this case here i cut my fabric one color and i cut um so do about 54 inches length and I saved the remaining of the two yards for my straps so and then I folded it in half because I needed to cut that and um, and fold it in half again and what I did here I cut this into nine inches strips okay so you cut this into the the, the 54 inches that you cut from your bolt this was my 54 inches as you see uh, you fold it in half my salvage would have been here I already trimmed my salvage I trimmed the salvage and then I already took a couple strips from there just to kind of you know to uh, you know speed up things a little bit so and this is my other piece that I already cut it from here see that was my fabric right uh, so you're gonna cut that into strips of 54 inches for you to do one color one color bag and we're going to do that one right now so i have my strip here at 54 inches 
and what I did here I used also 54 inches of um, interfacing and I use a Pelon product I really like the, this type of fusible fleece and it's 987F and that's the one I used here but you can use a different interfacing of course whatever you you like I mean if you have one that you like better you go right ahead you can use that it doesn't have to be this particular one so and what I have here so I have this big piece here so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark my middle here at my 54 inches so I'm gonna go ahead mark my middle so I have a marking pen here and I'm gonna go here and mark the middle here and middle here okay so I can go ahead and do a line there get my ruler see what I did my let me see what I did my middle so how many people Anybody has any questions so far? If you guys have any questions, just uh, let me know. Uh, my son is in the computer, so he'll read uh, to me, and I'll try to answer if I can, you know, to let you know, you know if you need some help or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and do a line here. So that's my middle. My pen wasn't exactly working properly. Oh, there it is. And then I'm going to go here for my sides. And I want my flap, as you see on this bag here, I want this to be about five, about five inches. So I'm going to go here to this side. And I'm going to mark five inches down. Let's see. See if I put it this way so you can see. Because I'm recording with myself, so I'm not exactly... Question. Yes? Uh, what size is the strip you're working on? It's From 54 wide. inches by 9 inches wide. Sorry about that. I didn't tell you how wide it was. So it's 9 inches. That's why uh, normally fabric is 44 wide. So you would be able to cut at least 4 strips if you do um, a 54 uh, piece of fabric. So the length of the fabric, you should be able to take about 4 strips at 54 inches by 9. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to mark my 5 inches. And I'm going to do a line here also. Because this is going to be my flap. And I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Okay, so if you want it, for example, if you wanted your flap to be a different color. Like I'm going to show you a couple over there that I have the flap a different color. So you would be marking here. You would cut out here about four and a half, and then you would get another fabric and then touch it here. So you would have the flap in a different color. Okay, but we're gonna go, I'm gonna show you a couple that way also. So I mark that. I'm gonna do a line so I can see it. So, and what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna bring my middle line that I did here, the middle that I had here, I'm going to bring that line all the way up to here to my 5 inch mark. So fold it like that on the right sides. Question? Yes? Uh, just speak a little louder. Oh, so you guys can hear me? I guess the phone sometimes can be a little tricky because I'm recording with my cell phone. So sometimes that could be an issue with the, the volume and stuff. Doing my best to really speak a little louder so you guys can hear it. So you put it that way. Then you're going to bring your other five, five, the other side all the way up. And you're going to put it there. Even it out. Make sure down here it's even. The bottom here. And your markings from your 5 inch matching there. In here sometimes, because when you, you fuse things and, you know, sometimes when you put it together, then you end up with a little bit, you know, off here and there. So you're going to fold it evenly in both sides. 
making sure your lines are even there and there. And then in this case, you, you can always trim a little bit. So it's not a problem. You can always go with your, you know, with your cutter and trim a little bit. If you need to adjust anything, you can do it now or before you sew it. Okay, in my case, mine is still a little bit off here, so I'm going to just trim this part here. All right, so after that, I'm going to pin it here and here. So what I'm doing here is I have that folded like that in the middle. Okay, you can round these corners. Okay, you can definitely round these corners. I'm also going to straighten up this part here because it looks like it's not exactly 100% straight. So I'm going to straighten it up a little bit before I round it. And then now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to round that. You can use a roll of tape. Um, you can use, if you have one of these rulers from Creative Grid, these are really good. You can definitely use those and run them up that way. They make your life a lot easier sometimes. Or you can just use whatever tools you have around. It's not really a big deal. You know, just mark it and just go ahead and trim it. Sometimes I'll go, I'll fold mine and I'll just go freehand and I actually just round it like that. But if you're not if you're not comfortable doing that, you can definitely, you know, mark it and do that. So now what we're gonna do, I you see, this here is where your fabric joins here and goes like that. So I'm going to, from the join of my fabric here, I'm going to mark about, I would say about four inches, more or less. And I'm going to put a pin. Okay, and around there the same thing. About four inches from the top, from whatever you have here, that's your folded fabric to there. It's not a big deal, can be a little bit more, a little bit less, doesn't, it's not a huge deal, doesn't make much of a difference. And then what I'm going to do, you see I have this folded like this, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I put the sewing machine here, I hope that this does not going to disturb too much um, the recording and I need to put white thread. Let me just change the thread quickly because I had the black on it. And, and we're going to be sewing those two seams right there. So, because you, you always want to try to match whatever color thread you have there. So, so I'm going to go ahead, open that and Question. I'm going to, yes. How did you get started in making bags? You make it look so easy. <laughs> I guess because I really like bags and uh, it's almost like creating a puzzle if you think about it. It's really not, as long as you're understanding, you know, how things get put together. It's the same as quilting. Like if you, if you sew bags or quilting or um, any other project that you do, it's really just understanding how things should fit. And, you know, for me, I'm always thinking, what can I add? What can I change? Um, because I really like bags, I guess, you know. My husband teases me and tells me I'm the, the, the bag lady. Because so, <laughs> I'm always making bags. I'm always thinking which bag should I be making. So you're going to sew that part there. And you're going to also go there and sew that part also. And the reason that I'm separating these it's because I want to show you how to add the corners in the bottom. And on this side here, so I did one side, so I sew there and there. On this side here, one of these pieces I'm going to leave an opening. So I'm going to sew about two inches up, sew Question. out, and uh, then I'm going to go here and sew a little bit here and leave Question. an opening here. Yeah. Um, I would like to know where I can purchase the little leather tags that say handmade. I normally have them in store. Um, I will try to put a few on um, on the on my website. 
for you guys so you guys have a chance to purchase if you guys want um, I can show you what it looks like uh, and then you guys you know maybe even your local uh, store might have them so I'm leaving an opening in one of these sides and so this other one I'm gonna do the same thing Okay, so I have no this like this. It's open. I sewed here, sewed here, sew here a little bit. As you see, I always sew mine out like that and like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and from here to here, you see here to here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew all the way around like this, all the way to there. So the only little openings that are going to be separated is these here. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start what I had there. And I'm just going to go right ahead. You know, you have to bear with me because I have my machine on my uh, cutting table. So I'm really not sitting down at all. I'm just standing up. So I'm sewing it that way. So, and it might shake the table slightly. I hope that you guys can uh, see and understand. And our bag is almost done. Believe it or not, it's almost done. If you want, you don't have to do corners on these bags. I think this one, I'm gonna leave it without corners. So you have options. Okay, so I sew all the way around and I end up with something like that. The only reason that I did this is because in most of them, I do a corner here, and I want my fabrics to be separated in order to do the corners. But this one, I'm going to leave square, so you can see what it looks like square. And then the next one, we'll do it with the corners. So I'm going to go ahead here. I have an opening here. And this is quite small. You can open a little bit more if you if you want. Or you can leave a little bit more opening. Um, Question? Yes? Uh, what's the seam allowance? I'm using a quarter of an inch. I don't, uh, sorry, I'm using a half an inch. I don't like sewing bags with a quarter of an inch because I find it's too close to the edge of the fabric. And you have more of a chance that sometimes with the pressure of putting things in it that your fabric might fray and then your bag becomes unsewed. Okay, so most of my bags will be half an inch or bigger. I will not use a quarter of an inch. Unless I'm working with a pattern that I bought, pattern that I bought, or you know, and then in that case, I would be following their instructions and I would do whatever they tell me to. Okay, so now I'm just going to turn this one out. This is just one color, one strip, one color, one bag. So, and then we're gonna work with different ones, different ideas that you can add different fabrics and create the same bag slightly different. So you have options. And if you're doing these for children, you can even do them slightly smaller. Instead of doing nine inches, you might do uh, seven inches or eight inches. And you Question also, yeah. For Norma, uh, do you wash your fabrics first on all projects? Uh, sometimes in quilting I do, in bags normally I don't. Uh, it's an option. If you like washing your fabrics first, it's, you should, if that's what you're comfortable with. I never had too many issues with fabrics, but um, if you think you prefer washing your fabrics, I normally don't do mine, but if you do, you go right ahead and wash them. Okay, so... No, of course, this is what I have here. It's slightly long bag. You can do these even shorter if you'd like. You can do 52 or 50 or whatever. I did the 54 because 
my next ones I'm going to be do doing with corners and the corners will take and you see I have my opening here question and, yes do you start your fabric before sewing no I don't I just use it normally just stand there um, never had too many issues but again it's always a personal preference if you feel you're more comfortable the opening that I have here see now it's in the inside you see that and you can go ahead and close that or normally I leave this open until I actually attach my magnetic snaps but the bag is pretty much done look so you go like that and put your through that little hole you mark your snap here and your snap here and you attach that we're not going to do this on video i'm sure you've done that before so i'm just going to do that and now we're going to talk about the the strap where do we we attach that strap so i have had a few straps that i've made let me see if i find them in my pile here that i have so I chose this fabric that's from the same line. Um, I believe this is called Chloe by Northcott. So what I'm going to do here, so what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to go top stitch this part here, iron it, and top stitch all the way around. I like to increase my tops when I do a top stitch. I like to increase it to about 3.5 or 4 because it does a better job. I find it looks nicer, looks more professional. So I'm going to go ahead and change to 3.5 and I'm just going to, it's better if you press it, they will look a lot better. Oh, I think I'm not close to the edge enough, let's, let's cut this thread. Need to move the needle slightly to the edge. I don't know if you can see. I, I want to sew right at the edge. So I'm going to go ahead. And, and then I'm just going to do quickly a top stitch. Again, it's probably better if you press it first. I'm just kind of pressing with my fingers. And I'm only doing my top stitch around the flap. You see, only around the flap. Now I can iron the iron off because that's one of those marking pens that irons off. And it's like that. So my strap, I'm going to be attaching my strap here to the side. Okay. And I would have to take this out and push this in. Into here, I would mark both sides. And I would attach my strap. I'm not, again, I'm not going to do it right now because um, we're going to show you the different other ones that you can make on the same style and also do the corners question. and the bottom. Yes? From Norma. Yeah? Probably a dumb question, but what is a messenger bag? A messenger bag. I guess a messenger bag comes from, um, I guess from the, the West, if you think about it. If you watch those old movies, you see a lot of those, um, um, you know they used to use those crossbody bags that would have a flap and they would uh, most of, uh, most all the time they would deliver mail and they would use a bag similar to that with a strap that they would carry around their um, around their body that's where the name as long as as far as i know that's where the name came from and so then you attach the strap like that like i was showing you Question. and yes do you add any interfacing to the straps? No, I, and this one I didn't, but you can. It's up to you, depending if you want them to be slightly thicker or if you want them slightly light. If you're trying to make these, for example, to sell and stuff, sometimes you might not want to do that because you might want to cut the cost down. Okay, so I'm going to put this one here to the side and we're going to go to the next one that I have here with the different options. 
So let's see. So know that I have one here. And what I have here, I have two colors. So now in this case here, I'm going to end up with the lining one color. As you see, this one is all one color. This one, what I did my 54 inches, I cut it in two pieces. Uh, I cut it two pieces, one of each color. And on this case, just to cut the cost down, I use fusible fleece, but I only use the fusible fleece on my all side fabric. So I didn't even use fusible fleece on my lining because I decided that this was gonna be my lining. So I joined them together, half an inch seam allowance, did the fusible on this side and left it that way. Then we're gonna follow. Question. Yes. What is she making today? What is she making? What yeah, I'm what I'm making, making today? I Monica make just got here. I'm making a messenger bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark again my five inches. On this case here, I'm using a chuck marker because my uh, marker that I have there is not going to show up here on this color. And so I need to mark five inches. And let's see, that's five inches. Oh. And also I need my five inches on this side. And five inches. Question? Yes? I'm not too sure what she means, but with dividers? With dividers? I think she's talking about like, does a messenger bag have like dividers? You could, you could add pockets and we're gonna talk about it right now. Oh, you can add pockets into the messenger bag. So now as you see, I have two colors. I chose this one for my lining and I chose this one for my outside fabric. And um, what I have here, and I fuse, as I mentioned, I fuse interfacing to my right side of my fabric, and this one I didn't. So let's talk about if you want to add a pocket. So if you want to add a pocket to your old side, like on this one that I have here, okay? This one, as you see, I have a pocket here. So you get your fabric, you get a piece of fabric. Let's see if I have a little piece here that I can show you. So you would go to your sewing machine, has to be nine by whatever size you decide, as long as not longer by your body, right? Has to be somewhere in there. You can do, um, so you're gonna go ahead and sew it there. Turn it to the right side, that would be this side here. You would set it right here, like that. And then, you could secure it here on the sides, okay? After you've done that, we're gonna follow exactly the same instructions that we've done before. This part here that's folded, this is this was like we did the first one, this would have been our middle of our fabric because these two pieces would make my 54 inches, right? So then I go ahead and I bring these two pieces up to here to again to my five inch line that I marked from there to there, I would bring to there. And my pocket would end up there in the middle. And I would bring back my main fabric, bring it back up to here. And we would do exactly the same thing that we did here. Okay, on this the first one. We would mark, we would pin this here, make sure this is even here and put our pins and do exactly the same thing. So in this one here, I'm actually gonna show you how to do the corners. I'm not gonna be putting the pocket in here. I'm gonna take this off, but this is how you add the outside pocket. When adding in the outside pocket, however, what you gotta do is you gotta mark here the middle and add your magnetic snap first. Okay, so you would add it here because after your pocket is done, you know, you're not gonna wanna see anything in here inside of your pocket, right? So you would have to have it in between here. And when you add a magnetic snap and if your pocket is not lining, lined, you're gonna have to use a little piece of interfacing on the magnetic snap. So it gives you more strength. So when you open your bag and close your bag, you don't um, rip your fabric, okay? 
So I'm not going to add the pocket, but I'm just going to go ahead and, and make, fix this up. And on this one here, I'm actually not going to round it up. I'm going to pin it as I pin the other one. And we're going to do slightly a different style. Question. Yeah? Are you keeping this video up? Yes, the video will be available uh, on YouTube, of course. You guys can watch it later. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mark it there. And I'm going to go here, in this case here, I'm going to do this slightly different. So I'm going to mark my middle here, just to give a different style. Okay. And instead of rounding this up... Question? Yes? From Ken? Yeah. Hello, my wife is asking me, can I order these fabrics from you and have them shipped? Of course, we ship all over Canada and United States. For international, you would have to... Um, uh, send, send us a message and we would have to give you an estimation of um, shipping cost okay so I'm gonna go two inches this way and two inches this way and mind you I don't have one done like this I'm just going as you know as we're doing the videos just to give you options what you can do so uh, bear with me I am done one like this so this will be and here I'm gonna go, I think I'll go three inches. Let's see, three inches, I think three inches should work. Okay, you go three inches this way and three inches this way. So we're really this one, we're just making it as we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark a line from the two inches to the three inches there. And do the same thing here, three to the three. Right. I'm just gonna fold these, make sure they are even. So we have our markings exactly the same. The same, yeah. They look about the same. And if you do it this way and you pin it, you can really just go ahead with the scissors, make sure they are. Let's see, make sure they're really even together. I'm gonna put a pin. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut this like this. So we'll have a different style here. All right. So so I'm going to go ahead now and sew these again. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark somewhere here between here and there. I'm going to leave a marking. So we're going to go ahead about there and about there. So I'm going to sew these again separate. Let me just bring this up and change back to... Question? Yes? From Deb, are you in Canada and where is your business? I'm in Canada and uh, the store is on Brampton, Ontario. So if you ever near us, come and visit. We'd like to see you. Okay, I'm gonna sew this one also. Okay, so we know this one that doesn't have the interfacing is our lining, so we're gonna leave an opening here. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew about two inches or so, and then mark my opening. to sew mine out and then go back here go a little bit more question yes do you have a store in Vancouver no I don't I wish I, I could have a store in Vancouver but unfortunately I don't live there 
I live in Brampton, so the store has to be where I live. So are you from Vancouver? I would love to visit. It's, I heard it's beautiful. Uh, question, more of a statement. Uh, Gina, your sewing machine is slightly out of camera view. All right, let's see. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm using my earphone and I really can't see what's being recorded. So it's like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Hope you guys understand that. It's, it gets. She said, uh, no, she's not from Vancouver. What? She said she's not from Vancouver. You asked her if she's uh, from Vancouver. <laughs> why, why, does she, why do you think I'm from Vancouver? Do Just curious. Why did she? Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead, so I sew those in there and there and there. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around again. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these like this, again, and to join all the way to here. Okay? Another question? Yeah. Uh, what sewing machine do you use? Do you this use? one here is Baby Luck, and this is called a Quiltish Choice. It's an older uh, make, but I really like it. Um, I have a few other ones. I actually have a brother and I also have Oscar Vanya, but I seem to always tend to go to this one. I find it does a really good job and it goes through a lot of layers with no with ease. What is your favorite brand guys of sewing machines? Another question. Yeah. Is it okay to make your bags and sell them? Go ahead, not a problem. Don't have a problem with you selling anything I make as long as you don't try to make the pattern and sell the pattern and saying it's yours, then I probably would have a bit of a problem. <laughs> but you can sell anything I make, not a problem at all. That's why I try to give you guys ideas so you guys can um, make some money. Why not? It, it's her sister that lives in Vancouver. I misunderstood before. Oh, I see. Oh, I have no thread in my needle. Let's see. Question? Yes? How long have you been sewing for? I learned to sew. See, I grew up in Portugal in a small island. I think I have, must have mentioned that before. Um, it's a small island uh, right beside Africa. And I learned to sew when I was 11. Um, then I came to Canada when I was 18. And for many years, I actually didn't sew. I used to do knitting, crochet, and um, because that's the things I've learned as a kid, as growing up in a small island and everything used to be handmade. Um, then I got back to sewing when my kids were uh, younger. Um, they were in school and um, that's one of the activities that sometimes I enjoy doing and even sewing with the kids at school. I actually used to volunteer at school at lunch hour at the library and I used to uh, teach a couple kids to sew and that's how pretty much I got back into the sewing. Barbara says Madeira question mark? Madeira Island. If you go on uh, YouTube, uh, on YouTube, sorry, on uh, Google and search for Madeira Island, it's a really nice island. It's very tropical, warm, um, so you probably would enjoy it to visit if you have a chance. Okay, so this one I saw that the same thing I did the first one. I just, this part here is slightly different. And on this one also, I'm going to do corners. So I'm going to go here in the bottom here, this bottom here that's closed. And I'm going to trim about, um, Probably not even an inch, I would say about a half an inch. I want a small, small, uh, 0.75, I think it's better, slightly bigger. Again, this is not something that I created a pattern. I'm just like doing as we are right now live. So I'm making everything pretty much live and I'm changing things as I go. So you see how I normally Question. go about creating my stuff. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Hi Gina, are you going to be doing more of these live videos? I love all your work. I don't know, we have to see. Um, 
it's a bit of work sometimes with the videos and uh, I always need somebody to be here to kind of you know read the questions and stuff so my son is the one who's helping me right now he's the one on the computer answering you trying to read the questions and answering you back um, so we'll see um, we'll see how it goes so what I'm doing is so I mark 0.75 and um, so I'm from my scene up 0.75 and 0.75 that way yeah it's more of a comment but she yeah. says my mother passed away four years ago and I never got to learn to sew from her when I wanted to learn after that I found it hard until I found your channel thank you so much oh I'm glad I could help I'm glad you know that's what sometimes makes me want to do the videos because I really personal I don't like being in camera I um I'm, I don't get very comfortable in front of a camera or even speaking in public in front of other people. Uh, but sometimes, I, you know, I get emails and comments and people that really enjoy and um, they'll learn something with me or, you know, they, you know, out of the blue, they were going through depression or they send me something saying, you know, you know, I inspire them to start doing another hobby. And that's what makes me want to do the videos. I also lost my mom many years ago, so um, it can be very sad. And so, and um, but uh, I'm sure you know your mom will be proud of you that you're sewing again and doing what she loved. Probably she probably loved that a lot. Question? Yeah. More on a brighter note. Um, I knew you report this from Barbara. She was the one that asked if it was the data. Uh, I knew you were Portuguese. I told my husband, uh, she's or he's from the Azores. Madeira is on our bucket list. So uh, my husband is actually from the Azores also. He's from São Miguel. I hadn't been in the Azores. In for, uh, you know, maybe one day I also would love to visit the Azores. Um, I've been in the mainland in Lisbon, but uh, the Azores I actually hadn't visited. But uh, Madeira, I was there last year. It has changed a lot since I was a kid, but it's still beautiful, full of flowers and a lot to see. So now I did my little corner. So we're going to do the standard corner. So we're going to go ahead and put them together like that. Sometimes when you don't have uh, an edge here, like when you don't have a seam here, sometimes it's hard to see the middle. So what I suggest you go here, you clip slightly this little piece here because that gives you your middle. And I'm going to go ahead and do also here. I'm going to clip slightly there and there because now I know for sure this is my middle. So then I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to go here, pin it like that. You can put a pin or you can just go ahead and sew it. And you can open the seam or turn it to one side. In my case here, I'm going to be opening my seam. Okay, let's pull the machine back in here. And I'm going to go ahead and sew it. And this one, pretty much, we need a top stitch and should be done. There, there, this one here. So in bags, um, so bags can be very standard if you think about it. It's really, you have to think you have a base and then you have the sides and then sometimes you add different fabrics to create different options, different sides. But it's really just under, understanding the proportion, how, how proportional you want your bag to be. And sometimes you do, I mean, we all make mistakes. I make mistakes sometimes and sometimes I take it apart and fix it. And sometimes I'm not happy with the finished product because, you know, sometimes I have an idea I'm watching TV or something and out of blue something pops in my head oh you know a pocket this way or this should be looked this way or maybe I should make something like this and sometimes I will get paper and just cut it into pieces and try to put those pieces together and see how it's gonna work uh, so um, ideas come from everywhere uh, you get influenced when you go to a store or you see someone walking around that has a neat bag or has a different pocket or you know, and then you, you try to put all those ideas together and uh, mixing up those ideas in your head, how you can use all those ideas that you, you've seen around and create something that's going to be what you want it to be. 
So from one project, you can create sometimes so many, so many different variations. And this is one of the ones that I'm actually showing you just to show you the same idea how you can have different variations of the same bag. Okay, so did all my corners. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna trim this slightly because I don't want any bulk on these areas here. And again, this one is pretty much done. So I have my opening here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn it. Let's see, hopefully I'm in camera because I can't exactly see what you guys seeing. Okay, let's see. Let's see. All right. Forgot to take the pin out. Well, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Let me get that pin before I poke myself. All right, there we go. And well, if any of you that are watching are in Brampton or live near Brampton, uh, I think some of you know that I um, I teach children to sew. I also do a few adult classes. We'll be having some workshops this uh, before Christmas on bags. I'm actually going to be teaching how to create a bag from a simple pattern, then change it any direction that they want. I'll add different zippers and different pockets and stuff like that. Um, so if you are in Brampton, Mississauga or surrounding areas and you want to come for a class, you can check our website. We just put the newsletter uh, online so you can see what's available. Okay, so this one, you see, now I have corners and the bottom and that there. Again, I'm going to use my opening to put my magnetic snap and I'm also going to do a top stitch and then this is a different look. So this is what it looks like. All right, and again, you do the same thing with the strap. You, let me get my ruler out of the way. Let's see, grab my strap. See, so you see this one is square bottom. This one, we have that little square bottom, and look, it looks quite cute. You add the strap, again, the same way to this side, there, and there. I probably will show it in the end how to put rivets. Um, I would have to change the lining. I'm going to do a quick top stitch on this one. And uh, I'm going to leave all my magnetic snaps to add it later before I close my lining. Because now I have lining. If you see this type of bag like this, this literally, it, this is reversible. If you wanted to use the other side, you, you made the bag and you weren't happy with the way Question. the old side was. From yeah. Carrie. Yes. Uh, what age are the children that you teach, Nina? I'm watching from Queensland, Australia. I've, I started teaching kids as young as six. You could also use that this this way. Um, now I kind of change it for age eight and up. Um, I find there was a few six-year-olds that could were really good on the sewing machine. They could really sew. But also I found that I had quite a few six-year-olds that really only needed is just someone to watch them. So that's why I changed the age up a little bit right now. So any of you teaches children or even grandchildren or, you know, um, any other, you know, things that you guys like to teach them or, or any questions about how to teach children? Because, yes. Uh, how long is your strap? The strap that I have here, I just used the length of my fabric, so it would be about 44 by, and I did a four inch, I did a four inch strip, and I've done these straps before in other videos. So what I did is, is it was a four inch, and I fold it in half, fold this half in, and then fold half and half and half, and I sew that there, and I end up with about one inch strap all right again you can use interfacing if you want this to be slightly thicker all right let's go here to this one here and we're going to do our top stitch change my needle position all the way to the edge of the foot and i'm going to go ahead and change it to question yes uh from cassandra 
Sarah. I asked a little further up, but I think you missed it. How old is your son that is helping you tonight? What a great kid he is. He's doing a great job. Thank you both very much. Uh, my son is 20. Um, so he does like, you know, what I do. He helps me quite a bit. And also my daughter sometimes helps me quite a bit. One is to edit the videos and do the artwork that you guys have seen on uh, on Facebook. And um, my business cards, my web page. She, she, she's more, um, she likes art. And she also very creative. But they both help me a lot. You know, I wouldn't be able to do this without them. And the weeks that sometimes we don't have a video, sometimes also comes down to that sometimes they are in university and sometimes they don't have time to put all my clips that I recorded together and sometimes the videos end up not being posted um, they do their best everybody has their own you know responsibilities but I am glad I you know I'm very proud of my kids they do help me a lot okay another question if yeah? you were to add a button instead of a magnetic strap would it be completely reversible yes you could you could add a little a little strap here to here and add a button there and add a button on the other side and sure you could use completely reversible and in here so the way we do this because the way we do this part here for the opening you can just get a needle and thread and sew this by hand so it would be an invisible seam here and yes you completely reversible more a comment but by the way I uh, agree with Cassandra your son is great <laughs> so are you Gina thank you thank you very much okay let's go ahead and so this one I just need to attach the magnetic snaps and of course a strap okay so and that's what the bag would be with two colors so now the next one that we're going to do we're actually going to add a different color to our um to this this part here we're going to add a different color to the flap okay so i'm going to just hold this on the machine a little bit again it's just different variations that you guys can do and make it fun so we have this one here we have this one here uh question for your next video, would you consider doing a three zipper box pouch? Three zipper. Um, I do have one that I just made the other day. I was at Brampton Folk Fair and I actually saw one there while I was uh, there at the fair. Uh, didn't write the instructions, the measurements, but I'm sure I can. Um, maybe in the future I will make one for you guys. Do you have one? Uh, I do. I do. I have somewhere around. Where is it? Check at that corner there. Okay, so this one here. So you have to end up with the pieces. Your pieces have to be about 54 inches, or you can do different size. It doesn't have to be exactly. Doesn't have to be exactly um, 54 inches. Adam, maybe over here on this part here. It was here before on top of the fabric. No. No. Okay. In a little bit, I'll have a look and see where I put that three zipper and I'll show you guys. So what I have here, again, I had my uh, 54 inches, so I cut it in half. So I needed half. So it would be uh, 54. Uh, so it would be 27 inches of this one and 27 inches of this one. Then I cut five inches off or four and a half inches off of this color and I added another color for my strap you have to pay attention to the direction because so how do you know if you sew this this way or that way well it's very easy what you do is you have to think if you have your bag done you fold this like this this is how I want my bag to look like this is gonna go like this and this is gonna come down so now I know exactly how I'm going to sew that part. So another question from Carrie. Yeah. I would love to teach children to sew and would appreciate if you share some ideas to do so. So when I start with children uh, to sew, um, of course, 
teaching children is a big responsibility. Also, it's a liability. So I would suggest you always do a form and uh, make sure that the parents that you, that the children that you're teaching are aware that they are going to be working in a sewing machine and they are going to be using pins and scissors that they can hurt themselves. And uh, um, so that part has to be very clear between, between you and the parents, the, the children that you're teaching. Um, I always start with them teaching them the sewing machine, threading it, threading it and understanding. Um, I suggest, I don't know what kind of machines you have. I normally I provide, provide all the machines for the children to use. And I always pick machines that have speed control because I want them to learn to sew and not being afraid of pressing that pedal as hard as they can and the machine is not going to go any faster. Then as they, as they learn a little bit more, then we keep playing with the speed faster and faster until they actually are able to manage the speed with the foot. Um, also, I normally I start them with paper. We do lines. We learn to sew lines on paper first. Then we also um, do, um, we learn all some terms for uh, sewing, like pivot the corner so they leave the needle down and just lift the foot and knowing how, when to turn the fabric. We learn that second. We also do that on paper first. Um, then we do curves. We learn to sew curves on paper. Um, sometimes we do, um, one of the first projects I do with them is sometimes a drawstring bag or maybe a pillow because it's really straight sewing. And then we build, we build on the pajama pants they've done, they do bags, they do um, a little bit of clothing. So, but it's, it's, you have to um, teach them to go slowly and try to finish everything that they start and um, not giving up. That's all sewing is about. Okay, so. So this one, as we see, I show you that. So on my on my outside fabric, I actually attach a five inch there as we talk. So so remember, my my long piece has to be 54 inches. Or if you decide to do different measurements, use the measurements that you're using. But you have to determine that how big your flap is, and that part you're going to take from your main fabric off and sew your flap on. Okay. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. So I have five inches there. So I'm going to go here. This is my lining. I'm going to put my lining to that side. And on this case here in my lining, I also don't have any interfacing. I only interface my main fabric. Because again, if I want to sell these bags, I don't want these to be uh, too expensive. So I can uh, actually make them less expensive. So I'm going to go that way. And I'm going to go ahead. I know I need five inches from here to here to bring my fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my five inches. Or if I decided I wanted my flap to be six inches, yeah, I could also do that. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my five inches on that side. Question? Yes. Uh, what fabric is that? This is a line from Northcott Fabrics and it's called Chloe. Chloe. Okay, I will be putting uh, some of it on the website this week. There was a new fabric that I just got in, and I really like this line. It's kind of bright and fun. So we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to go here, bring again my fabric folded like this. Again, I bring it here. So now let's talk if you wanted to add a pocket on the inside. So you don't want a pocket on the outside, but you want a pocket on the inside. How do you do that? So this is my lining piece and this is my five inches of my flap. So, and I know I'm gonna have to hold these like this, these like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and fold this like that. So I wanna add now a pocket on the inside. So my pocket has to go here. So I would get my piece of fabric, my pocket. I would finish my pocket, it has to be the same length, or you can do smaller if you want, or even if you wanted to do credit card slots let's say you could also do that attach them here so you have to think this is your fold you have to think this is going to be your flap fold so anything that you got to do is going to be on this part right here okay and if you're doing corners like we did on this one here okay 
So you have to take in consideration the, at least 2 inches because we did 0.75. So if you think about it, 0.75 that I, that I did my corner, so that would bring my fold, oops, let's see, to about two and a half after I do my seam allowance, all right? So you also have to think that you're going to be losing a little bit here. So you would want to put your pocket too low down. So you have to take in consideration that this is going to be a corner. So you don't want to bring that down too much. So you're going to go ahead and and um, make it um, make it slightly um, smaller, not this tall. So you would go ahead and get that or whatever pocket you decide that you want to add. And you're going to add after that line. You're going to do that line there. You would put your pocket there, a little bit down from there, because you know that's your flap that's going to fold like this. And I would secure it in place, of course. And then we would follow again the same step. We're going to bring our two fabrics up. And our other fabric up. And on this case, I know I have my 5 inch here. So I want my 5 inch to be there. And let me take this off from there. And go there. Okay. I'm going to even it out with the bottom here. Again, make sure those are even. And I want to make sure that this is even here. So I'm going to make sure that this is even somewhere here. And bring that up. You know, bring that up a little bit, okay? Adjust the way you want it. So in this case, because I want my, in this case here, because I want my, um, this part here to be even here, I don't want that, I want that to be right on top. I'm actually going to base myself on this side here first so I can see that is matching there exactly and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold my lining on top and make sure it's even in the bottom and if by any chance I think the fabric is good see it's right on but by any chance if my fabric here was slightly bigger I would trim it off okay so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's pin. I'll pin on the other side, you can see better. It's lighter color. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pin. And pin. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. So halfway up. And... As you see here, my lining is slightly off there, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim it off. I want to make sure everything is even first, so I'm going to put a straight line here. And sometimes when you're making bags, you have to adjust certain things, so don't be scared. I sometimes just trim it off, whatever you, you see, if it's not straight. So in this case here, I'm basing myself. Let's see if I push this down a little bit so you can see better. So I'm getting an even line there, and you see my lining is slightly off there. So I'm going to straighten it off there and I'm also going to base myself on this side, make sure my fabric is straight. I'm actually going to go ahead and then going to trim a little bit of lining that's actually not straight. Because I don't want to take this to the sewing machine and out of the blue, I sew it crooked because my lining is not straight. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and fix this here and we're going to do the same thing. Let me go a little higher. Question? Yes. Uh, where do you get your marking pens and what kind are they? This is friction, friction pens. Um, well, I buy from suppliers, so um, I'm sure you can find them in a lot of uh, stores, fabric stores. Most of them will sell them. This is what the ones I'm using here. And um, also, I really like the ones that chalk for dark colors. However, these pens, always test it in your fabric before you use it. Go in a little corner, test it, iron it off 
and making sure it's not going to leave a line because there are times that these will leave a kind of slightly light line on it and then you finish your project out of the blue you have all these lines don't come off so always test it before you use these okay so i'm gonna round my corners on this one uh maybe should i round it no i think i'm gonna do a another little square one like the other one i kind of like that i really like this one here i like the way this one turned out this part here so i'm gonna go ahead and do another one similar to that i think will be kind of cute so i'm gonna go about let's see one one two inches about there about there and cooler so two inches and three inches and I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off and I'm gonna sew it all right so we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing we already went through all those steps let me bring the machine closer okay and again separate them so this side See if we can speed this up. Oh, gotta change my needle position because it was set for stop stitch. All right, let's. Oh, it's on slow speed. So, what is you guys' favorite favorite sewing machine? You guys have a favorite? Does any of you have a favorite brand? No one? No one have a favorite brand? When you asked before, is it the baby vlog? Mm -hmm. I think someone has their brother. Uh, I think that's about it. So I'm going to be leaving an opening in one of these sides. Hmm? What? Is that, is that brand? What is it? N-E-C-C-I? Yeah. Is that like a hanger? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. There's tons of brands of sewing machines. You just have to find... I would love to own a commercial one. I don't have one, but I would like to have one. One day I'll buy one. Um, it would be nice to have, definitely. So any of you have a commercial brand sewing machine? Okay, we're gonna sew this side. sew this around so now I'm folding this again and start here where I stop here and I'm gonna sew all the way around to here so we're gonna go ahead and do that so is any of you planning to do these bags So whenever you're sewing and you have the option, always try to sew on the fusible side. I think I've said this in several videos before. And the reason why is the fusible side meaning anything that you have interface, any fabric that's already interfaced, if you have the option, sew on that side versus sewing in any other on just the fabric side. Because what happens is your fabric is more stable after it has interfacing and will not stretch. Because what often happens is the foot will stretch your fabric. And then sometimes you're sewing, by the time you get to the other end, you have extra fabric. 
and you're like, oh, I, I had a pin and everything, and how come I have extra fabric? It's because the foot will stretch your fabric. Unfortunately, it does that. So another way of you uh, decreasing the chance of, of not having your fabric stretch as much is decreasing your seam length. So if you're sewing a two and a half, because my machine, as soon as I turn it on, is already set up as two and a half. So if you decrease that to about two, on quilting often I do 1.8, because I don't want my pieces to stretch at all. Um, the two is a fairly good, a good way of having it. So it will stretch a little bit less because then your teeth, your uh, feeding dogs, are pulling a lot less fabric at the time. The foot is not, is not pulling, uh, is not stretching your fabric as much. So we're going to go ahead and do these little corners again. And I'm just going to cheat a little bit. So I'm going to use the little corner that I already cut from my, my other bag. And I'm just going to put it on top, seam allowance with seam allowance and the folded edge to there. And I'm going to go ahead and just trim it. So it will speed up things a little bit. You can also do a little square in paper, just like that, and keep it to the side, write whatever measurement you have there, and save it for future use. So when you're making, you just get your little piece of paper, put it on top, then you don't have to remeasure all the time. That's another way of saving time when you're sewing, is creating sometimes little templates, things that you already know it works, and you know have them labeled to the side and then so anytime you need them they're right there all right that's done and we're going to do the same to this one question yes the follow-up question from carrie yep how long and how often are your sessions with the with uh, when teaching kids so um the beginner classes that i have right now they are one hour length um and um the advanced, because I have children that have been with me for about four to five years. They come every year. They come here for an hour and a half. And they work in more complicated stuff, like dresses and skirts and, you know, uh, blouses and other things. Because we also do a little bit of clothing. I don't do a lot of clothing myself, and sometimes I even bring different people to teach them. If it's something that I'm not as comfortable doing. Um, when I learned to sew, I learned to sew with clothing. I didn't learn with bags or anything like that. But bags for me, for some reason, it comes more natural. I just can just, you know, cut a piece of fabric and make a bag. I don't have to think about it too much. Um, but um, I also do clothing. I've done clothing with the kids quite a few times. But um, since sometimes my time can be a little bit... So I try to teach them the other stuff and bring somebody else to teach them the stuff that I prefer not to teach or I'm not as comfortable teaching. You know, um, so children's, you know, most of the time they don't want to be a long time sewing and you don't want to discourage them. You want them to have fun. So try to create, to, to think of things that are fun for them. If they don't like clothing, don't force them to do clothing because they're just going to quit sewing. And you don't want that. You want them to. You want to encourage them to keep doing what they love. So uh, you try to find something that you know that they like to do, and go from there. You know, before when I first started doing the classes, I actually used to let them pick what they want to sew. So sometimes I had four kids. Most of the times, I only limit myself to four kids. The most I wouldn't have any more than four. But sometimes I had my classes would be four kids working in four different projects. So it's a lot of going back and forth from project to project, and it can be very challenged. So I suggest um, sometimes is to pick something that everybody can work at the same time, that everybody has the same interest, and then go with that because it's a lot easier. It will be a lot easier for you. I didn't even show you these corners because we've done that in the other bag. It's exactly the same. So I'm just sewing them here and we're going to turn it to the other side and see what it looks like. And
Madam, I'm even to grab one of those handmade tags from over there. I'll show them what the package looks like. And so they know what it looks like. And some of you are asking about the handmade labels. This is what they look like. They're from Dritz and it's called the leather label. Okay, so they come like that in little packages. All right, let's, let's go here. And I just want to clarify that I'm not getting paid from any of these companies to tell that this is what I use or this is what I like. It's strictly is what I like. Um, if you like something else, that's fine too. We all have different opinions and products, so it's okay. You try to do what works better for you. I just show you the ones I use. Uh, doesn't mean that's the only ones there that you can use. There's tons of other things out there that you can use. I try to always give my straight opinion. If it's something I don't like, I will tell you I don't like it. Because I don't like also, I will not recommend something that I don't believe in. If I don't like it, I don't like it, and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. So, so sometimes if people tell me, oh, um, would you do a video for me on this? I normally sometimes don't like doing that for the reason that, oh, but if I don't like their product. So it becomes that issue. Because I like being honest with you guys and tell exactly what I think about it. Um, I often having the store, I often sometimes buy things just to try it first to see if it's something that I actually like and that, that I think it's a good product um, before I actually even sell it to anybody. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and turn it to the right side. Okay. All right, let's have a look what this one's going to look like. Okay, look, same fabric, three different looks. So we're going to straighten this up through my lining here, my opening. Where is it? Oh, I guess you can't even see it. I'm going to straighten this up. Oh, so it's right here. Any of you guys do quilting or other things, or you guys prefer bags? What is it that you like really to sew? That's definitely one question for everyone. And there you go. Look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and do my top stitch. Again, you should really press this before you go ahead and top stitch. I'm just really just going with my fingers and pressing it. Question. Yeah. From Hazel. Yeah. Uh, do you make ladies underwear? I have bought some stretch lace, but I have no idea where to start with measuring to make it to make it made to measure. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not something that I've done before, so I wouldn't be able to to let you know. Uh, stick like I saw with lace before, but now with underwear, um, you would have to change the stitch of your machine to a proper stitch and measurement wise i'm not sure i'm sure there's some patterns out there that you can purchase that probably will give you um some a better idea how to sew them i know here there's one one particular store i don't remember the name of the lady anymore but she used to do a lot of that stuff um I think she's in Craftsy. I think she does some classes on, um, I believe, in bras and underwear. So if you go there, you might have some information. I believe it was Craftsy. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe so, that she actually had some classes that you could buy and uh, on that stuff. I prefer to work with things that are more stable, like cottons and... I mean, I do sew a little bit of knits and a couple other things like that, um, fleecy and all of that. But I definitely prefer to work with cottons. It's one of my favorite fabrics to work with. Okay. 
All right, do a top stitch here. Okay. And that's what this one looked like. See, that's one, that's two, and that's three. So one color, full one color, no corners, two colors, and three colors. All right, so we're gonna, of course I'm going to have to attach all the magnetic snaps. What I want to show you is a few of you guys had asked me how to put the rivets. You know, I had quite a few people asking me how do you put the rivets in. So I have a package here. This is the rivets that I'm using. It's from Dritz. And it's, I think, it comes 8 millimeters by 6 millimeters. And they also sell a tool that comes with this comes one like this and something like that and it comes also in the pot it's I guess called the rivet tool okay so you can buy that and what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna show you how to do this strap and install one strap and then we're pretty much done and um, hopefully you guys um, I answer some of your questions if there's anything else that you guys want to know um, Think so. Oh, uh, kind of a comment from Carrie. Uh, I bought my daughter a sewing machine thinking that she would get as much enjoyment as I did. Shortly after I gave it to her, we were on holiday together and she had a beautiful camera. When I asked her about her camera, she, she said that this is the sewing machine that you gave me. She, <laughs> sold, she sold the machine on eBay and bought the camera. She has turned out to be a very talent, very talented with that camera. Well, there's nothing nothing wrong with that. We all have different interests, and sometimes we have to respect that. Um, I mean, I my daughter sews. She learned to sew when she was 11. Um, when I started doing the kids' classes, she learned to sew. Uh, my son also sews a little bit. Not much, but he does sew a little bit. He had used the machine a few times. Um, but they have different interests. It's just the way it is. I mean, and what I find is... With a lot of people, with a lot of my customers, even that they come in, um, sometimes some of them, the more younger, they tell me, oh, you know, I when I was younger, my mom sold and my grandmother sold. I had no interest, but now I really like it. I start to enjoy it. Sometimes this, when you're older, sometimes your interests change too. So sometimes you might, now she might not want to sew and be happy with the camera. Later on, you never know. She might just go back to sewing again. Okay, so normally this rivet tool that you buy comes with a, another little piece that you can make the holes on the fabric to put the rivets in. I don't like using that, okay? Why? Sometimes when you make the hole in the fabric, the rivet, the, the, the material stretches a little bit and then the rivet passes right through, it doesn't stay put. So I prefer to use something like that and make a little hole on the fabric versus using that tool to make the hole because by using this I'm just opening like I'm stretching the stitches I'm just pulling the stitches apart like that but I'm not really making a whole hole it's a hole in a sense but it's not like I'm not taking a piece out of the fabric I'm actually just stretching all the threads that made that material to the other direction so they're not you know there's not a piece missing a fabric there so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna see where I'm gonna put the strap so I'm gonna go here see uh, I would say about two inches and about like I have a seam here so I'm gonna go my strap more or less middle way so I'm gonna go ahead you can sew this first you don't have to use rivets you don't have rivets this is another cost if you making stuff for sale is really becomes everything a cost and that's something that you have to consider when you're making your product so if it's something that you're selling you don't want it to become expensive just sew them in don't worry about the rivets but since I told you guys yeah, I use rivets so I'm just gonna do mine here so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go right in the middle of my strap and I'm gonna go ahead question yes it's more of a comment but uh they said i got rivets but i think i have the wrong tool to insert them they ended up looking really uh, rugged rugged 
Yeah, it's all to have the, the right tool, definitely. Uh, having the right tool means a lot. This one, I really like this one from um, Dreads because as you see, it has an indent here. And also, this also has an indent here. So when I put my rivet, it sits straight in there. It doesn't move. There's a, a lot of rivets um, tools. It doesn't have the indent. It's just like slightly rounded. So when you put the rivet, these move around. And sometimes when you go like that with the hammer, you know, when you have the other piece and you go with the hammer, what happens, because this, it's not securing it in place, they go around and then they bend here in the middle. Also, certain brands of rivets, this part here is not as thick. They're slightly slimmer. I think I bought one from a different company. I don't remember which company it was anymore. But I didn't like them because every time I tried to put it in, they would bend. They were not thick enough to, to handle it. So uh, when I started using the, the dreads, I really like it. It's one of my favorite rivets to use in bags. Okay, so I'll go like that. And now, as you see, just a little hole there and a little hole in my fabric. So I'm going to go put that through and that through. Get my other piece there. And so I put my tool in the bottom. And I need a mallet. One of these, these are plastic here, or there's, they sell these also with wood here. Don't use a hammer because they're too harsh on the, um, on the metal and they might bend it. So use something either as a plastic or even the wood ones. Uh, I tried to see if my husband, uh, before I buy mine, I looked for a wood one, but I didn't find it. So I ended up ordering this one and this one works really good. So I just do a couple of clips and it's done. See it's secure. You can tell it's very secure and um, it's pretty good. So I'm going to put another one on this side. So we're going to do the same thing. About just right about. I got the other one. This straps, if you don't want to, you can always do adjustable straps. I didn't do mine adjustable, but you can. You can do adjustable straps to be slightly longer. But I thought these bags are also really cute for children. If you have young kids, you, you can make these smaller. And if you're doing these for church bazaars or, you know, to sell in your craft show that you're going to. Because I have so many customers right now, they're going to craft shows. Almost every weekend they have a craft show. Um, for children, these are really, you know, pretty good fairly easy to make okay that's done all right we'll put it there because I'm gonna put my magnetic snap there I haven't had a chance and I'll do the same here to this side just measure make sure you're doing the same size so you have them at the same size. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go ahead and bring it. I'm done. So I don't know how many of you are out there right now watching. But if you are watching and you stuck with me through the whole video, there's a chance I'm going to be doing a giveaway. That's why I didn't say it anything until now to see how many of you would stick would stay around. So if you're there, just make a comment. And before I say goodbye, one of the names I'm going to, whatever name, we're going to do a random pick from the names of your comments they made there. And I will be sending to you um, about 54 inches of this fabric. So you can make a bag. All right? So... If you dare, make a comment, say hello, even if you hadn't said anything until now, you're just watching quietly, just make a comment, and um, before I say goodbye, I will announce a name, and you would be the winner of the one meter of this meter, uh, 54 inches of this fabric, and we'll be shipping it to you. All we need is you to contact us, give us your address, and uh, we'll ship it to you, so you can make the same bag that I'm making here. Question? Yes? Uh, can you flip it to the other side after attaching the straps so we can see how it looks? Yeah, I can, sure can. Just one second. 
again is if you sew these if you instead of using these if you sew them in and then put a little button here and a little button here there you go it's completely reversible all right so just add a little bit of style okay see it's just to touch this other one i have one more and we'll leave it at that because i will be adding afterwards some um the handmade tag also and there's another one here all right Oop. there we go didn't make the hole big enough So let's have let's see this one is the one okay that's so does any of you sell all your I guess some of you sell your stuff right you guys make it for sale do you guys have a channel like uh, a channel um a website or um, an Etsy shop that you sell your stuff on you can always let us let us know what it is we would like to see it okay so you wanted to see what would like with the handle on the inside well I guess with the handle will be will work just fine look you straighten up your handle and there you go but in this case would end up being just one color and this is what would look look on the side all right another way that you can add these um these straps is let's see if i show you just give you another idea Okay, I'm just going to trim a little piece of fabric here so we can, I can explain how to do it. Of course, I didn't cut this very straight. Okay, so another way that you can do these, this strap here, you can do the same thing that we did before in other bags like that. Okay, just imagine it's so like that and attach it like this in here like this and then let's see if I show you touch the handle like this and then Question. in here you would do it from the back also facing that way all right so instead of sewing here on the side you attach one side here and one side here from the back that's another way that you can attach these. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, do you cut left-handed? Yes, I'm left-handed. I do most everything left-handed. Actually, if I think about it, I don't know if I do anything right-handed. Probably not. <laughs> okay, so... There you go guys there's that one there there's this one here and this one here they're all different slightly different of course I kind of did this one the same but and some of you asked me for the three pockets three pockets so the only thing I was at Brampton Folk Fair I didn't have any measurements so and I always take a sewing machine so I can sew while I'm there and so I'm not bored um, the only thing I think uh, when I do my next one I will change the the lining a little bit make it slightly bigger so it folds in a little bit more I think my lining was slightly small but uh, other than that um, that's what it looks like 
I just cut a few pieces of fabric and just sew it there. And I think we're done. Adam, can you, um, is, how many people are there? Can you pick a name? Just yeah. do a random pick and we'll, we'll announce it. Okay, while I touch on a So you're picking someone. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Sandra Lewis. Sandra Lewis. Lewis? Am yeah. I pronouncing right? Uh, Sandra? I'm not pronouncing it right. Sandra, are you there? If you're there, just say hi. And you are the winner of one meter, one meter, 54 inches of this fabric that we used here in our video tonight. She said yes. <clears throat> Just um, send me, you can go to Facebook. Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, I created a new Facebook page. Um, it was under Arts and Crafts for you before. Um, Unfortunately, Facebook is not allowing me to change the name. I've been through so many emails with them. It's always the same story. They say no. So I created a new page. So it's, it's called I'll Be Sewing. And um, so I will leave the arts and crafts for a little while longer. But eventually, everything will go through the I'll Be Sewing. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, and we're done. I want to wish everybody a good night. And thank you for watching. Thank you for spending this evening with us. And hopefully we'll see you next week for another video. Uh, last minute question. Uh, will there be a tutorial on the three zip <coughs> Um, I will work the details a little bit better. Like I said, that one I was just, you know, at the fair and I created. And, um, and then probably in the future, sorry. I think I need some water now. <laughs> okay, guys. So, I'm going to probably leave you guys now. And uh, hopefully you guys can uh, make some of these. Send me some pictures. I'd love to see it. And I don't always comment. Uh, you know, I'll always uh, comment when you guys comment on the videos. But I really appreciate all your comments. And, um... So don't think I don't read them. I do read them. And it's just sometimes there's so much going on all the time that sometimes I, I don't always answer all the comments. But I do watch your comments and I really appreciate all of you guys watching. And we'll see you next week. Happy sewing everyone.